uh, we got another brief intro. Uh, I wanted to kick in at least two, two of these motherfuckers. So we got Kanye West on the screen. Yo, boy, Yeezy, doing the most, man. I'm pretty sure everybody remembers this album, the College Dropout. Everybody always wants Kanye to go right back to square one to this, you know. Um, he changed the game with this album, man. He got hella features on here. Uh, he got D-Ray Davis acting like Bernie Mac. He got John Legend, Keisha Cole, Selena Johnson, Tony Williams, Consequence, GLC, Jay-Z. He was signed to Jay-Z. So, um, Talib Kweli, Common. Uh, I got a remix of the new workout plan with Farnsworth Bentley on it. Slow Jam, oh man. Jamie Foxx, Twista, Luda, Freeway, Most Def. This is a fucking legendary album, yo. It got a. Uh, I think everybody remembers most of the songs on here. Uh, the only song people really don't. What's the most, the least memorable song on here? It probably had to be the one with Luda. No, the the, the two words, the two words song. Uh, he came in with Through the Wires. Yo, see, the, looking at this shit puts me back, man. This shit brings me back, man. I'm definitely gonna be listening to this shit again. Uh, so we got the next album, Registration. Still the same shit. Uh, D. Ray Davis, acting like Bernie Mac. Rest in peace to Bernie Mac. It was before he died. Uh, Adam Levine of Maroon 5. Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco is still dropping dope ass music. Paul Wall. Damn, I, I forgot about Paul Wall. Uh, I got I got this remix with T.I. on it. Charlie Wilson. The Game. I heard some shit about Kanye West in The Game. There was supposed to be a... Uh, they supposed to be going against each other. Um, I guess they just did some type of freestyle. I don't I don't know the full story on that. Uh, so we got Brandy, Nas, and this is at the tail end of Nas and whole beef beefing. This shit got some amazing. Amazing songs on here too. Um, Celebration is one of my favorite songs of all time. It reminds me of the GameCube for some reason. Celebration is one of my favorite songs. When I when I go back to this album, I'm always gonna go to Celebration. Remind me of Super Mario. Graduation. Just where everybody was like, "What the fuck is he doing?" It was still a dope album, though. I liked it. But everybody around me was like, man, this shit trash. Man, he only got like 14, 13 songs. This shit weird. You know. Uh, this is a good album. This is a solid album, too. Flash of Lights. Oh, wait. Let me go back to... What was the song? What was the... Oh, Touch the Sky. Heard him say. Gold Digger. Gold Digger. There's an inside joke on that shit. I think Kim Kardashian really, really, really cares for Kanye, though. I think she really cares for him. I think she really cares for him, man. Um, on this one, did I miss something on this one? Oh, Sierra Leone. Drive slow. 
a very memorable album. Uh, see, this, this is the early days of Kanye. So, on this one, on this one, we got Stronger. And that's the, that, I think that's the lead single. And again, people were like, man, we, we done with Kanye. At this point, people were sort of, sort of done with Kanye, but um, Kanye was going head to head to 50 Cent, and Kanye win, won by a little bit, so that changed the whole game, and even 50 Cent went more pop, it just changed the whole game, and you got Neil on here, T-Pain, Jeezy, Wheezy, Most Def, Dwell, Chris Martin from, uh, Coldplay, Coldplay. Homecoming is my favorite song on here. Every song on here is dope. Nothing, everybody remembers nothing. The good life. 808s and heartbreak. He came up with that. I heard some shit about um on a T Pain interview. I heard some shit on the T Pain interview where um. <laughs> where, where Kanye 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 named the song 808s and Heartbreak because he figured out that all T-Pain uh, songs from his first album was just a lot of love songs with a lot of bass on it so he decided to call his song 808s and Heartbreak and uh, T-Pain was harping on how Kanye West Kanye West project was so amazing but T-Pain didn't get his he felt like he didn't get his credit on his project. I'm pretty sure he did. T-Pain was huge. T-Pain was huge. He probably just didn't feel like he got his credit. But, um, we got Kid Cudi. Kanye, Kanye introduced us to Kid Cudi. We got a Jeezy verse on here. Tony Williams, Lil Wayne. There's not much. I had a good night on here too. Um, now my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Fantasy. I got a 2012 release, and I added a few songs on here. But he has hella features on here. This is a pretty crazy album. He got Nicki Minaj. Um, at this point, he signed. He was signing Tiana Taylor. Um, He got Amber Rose on here, and ironically, Amber Rose and Kanye West got, or no, uh, Kanye West and Wiz Khalifa got an Amber Rose verse on the same year. This album actually came out in 2010. Uh, Kanye West went out with Amber Rose first and made her popular. Then she went, she went to Wiz. We got Kid Cudi. We got a Raekwon first on here. We got a Dwell. We got Rihanna. Uh, Drake is on here, The Dream, Charlie Wilson, John Legend, we got Monster, Rick Ross, Jay-Z, Nicki Minaj, fucking bodied the shit out of this song, that's where everybody remembers Nicki Minaj from, bodying this monster song, so we got Soul Paul, Jay-Z, Pusha T, Sahai the Prince, Sahai the Prince is one of the most slept on motherfucking rappers in the game like that that motherfucker can spit like that motherfucker he can definitely spit we got Swiss Beats and then RZA New Dress for Rick Ross Runaway Hell of a Life The Blame Game it's a pretty good album Lost America and uh, See Me Now with Big Sean, Beyonce, and Charlie Wilson. Uh, now, I added to the world with Tiana Taylor and R. Kelly. Oh, and one thing about Beyonce and Kanye West, I don't I don't think they fuck with each other. That's what I'm hearing. I think they stopped fucking with each other. And R. Kelly is just, his again, his career is done. His career is done for. <clears throat> We got a DJ Khaled verse. Kanye West and DJ Khaled were working together at first. 
then um, Jay Z and Beyonce decide to work with DJ Khaled. Now DJ Khaled is pretty pretty big figure in hip hop, even though he does absolutely fucking nothing, as far as I know. See, I, I'm not completely disrespect him, but I think he I think he just puts the songs together. He finds the producers and he finds the artists. He calls them. He puts the songs together, and he makes a DJ set. And I think it wasn't these songs wouldn't ex exist without DJ Khaled. The DJ Khaled, the songs that DJ Khaled makes, those songs wouldn't exist without DJ Khaled. And he's a money machine. He's a brand. He's able to make the money and ship music off, and just put his name on there and it sells. And I think that's why the artists all flock to him. Let's so you got Mercy. Pusha T, Big Sean, Two Chains, early Two Two Chains first. Click. Sometimes Big Sean's voice tends to get a little annoying, and on this song, it's it's kind of annoying. I like Big Sean, but his voice his voice gets like it's just like it's just like I don't know his voice sounds annoying on that song. So you got New God Flow, Ghostface Killer. And the one, I don't want to go through all these features. It's too many, too many fucking features. I think the last six songs are from the Cold Summer Good Music compilation album. Oh, so he dropped Yeezus. When he dropped Yeezus, he was in a lot of controversy, controversy for this for this album. Cause first he said he's a god. He decided to say he was a god, and then he dropped Yeezus, and nobody really liked Yeezus because it was just, it was a different tone than what everybody was used to, to Kanye West doing, and this is where everybody was like, oh, I want the old Kanye. Um, so we got, we got these songs, On Sight, Black Skinhead, A God, just like he said he was, uh, New Slaves. New Slaves is a memorable song. Uh, he, he, he references that a lot, especially nowadays. I, I think he slowed down on it, but he basically say, saying we're the New Slaves. Um, I'm not going to put my pen on that, but he does have a Frank Ocean verse. Chief Keef, Assassin, K. Cuddy, Pop Can, King Louie. I don't know what the fuck happened to King Louie. We're going to research that, though. We're going to figure that out. And Charlie Wood. Then a Justin Vernon verse from Justin Vernon from Bon Boniver. Uh, I think the songs everybody liked, they said they liked was uh, was Blood on the Leaves and Bound. So, and we got this demonic album cover. <laughs> okay, so uh, he dropped the next album, Life of Pablo. Life of Pablo was originally going to only have 10 songs. But thanks to Chance the Rapper, thank you so much Chance the Rapper, um, it got extended to 20 songs. So, he's worked with newer artists on this one. A lot of the songs are short though. You got Ultra Light Beam. Chance the Rapper, Kirk Franklin, The Dream, Kelly Price, Kid Cudi, uh, Designer. <laughs> Designer just completely fell off the map. Swiss Beats, Rihanna, The Dream, Young Thug. Young Thug is known for, um, I think this is the first major artist to really work with Young Thug. Yeah, yeah. Um, Young Thug is known for wearing dresses and doing gay shit. But I heard the album So Much Fun. So Much Fun is pretty good. It's a pretty dope album. We got Chris Brown and Kid Cudi. The Weeknd. Ty Dolla Sign. To Vic Mensa. God, man. Vic Mensa, another artist that kind of just fell off. Was he, I think he was signed to Rock Nation. 
Him and DJ Academics got into a beef. I'm gonna go into that more at uh, on when we talk about Vic Mensa. Uh, Andre 3000, Kendrick Lamar, fucking ripped this shit. And Kanye held his own too. It seemed like he was struggling, but as I listened to the song more and more, I'm like, I, I think Kanye held his own. Uh, so he got a Post Malone feature and a Sampha feature. Sampha's a British British artist. I don't know if Sampha's gonna keep making music or what. I don't know if I'm gonna keep him on the playlist. I probably won't. Life of Pablo, I, I like this song. Oh, and the the artwork, the album, the album artwork I got. I don't know if this is gonna be impossible to find, but I'm glad I found this shit. I don't know if you can Google search and find this, but this is that's an exclusive album cover for real, for real. So now we got Yay. Um, after Life of Pablo, he started tweaking out. He really started just tweaking out. There was some other controversies with Kim Kardashian's uh, jewelry being stolen and all this other shit. So when he dropped Ye, everything squared away. Um, he tripped at a concert. Everything was squared away. And then he went to Wyoming. He dropped this album. Um, this album only has originally only has seven songs and he went on a slew of dropping seven song seven song albums for each of his artists and and not so let's see so he dropped five albums and he all produ he produced all the beats on the albums um He dropped. First, he dropped. Um, I think he dropped his project. Then he dropped um, Pusha T. Kanye West had Ye. Pusha T had. Uh, was it Daytona? I think, I think it was called Daytona. And Tiana, Tiana Taylor dropped the project. Hers was eight. Hers was eight songs. Um, Kid Cudi and, and Kanye dropped a joint project, and then Nas dropped his project. So he was in Wyoming, has a different vibe to it. I added about three songs, an uh, unreleased song called Alien, Ye vs. The People. T.I. and Kanye had a discussion. They put it on, they made a song about it, <laughs> and the troll song, Lift Yourself. Uh, so now we got Jesus is King. That's his newest album. Um, Kanye basically decided, I'm going to drop a, he said, I'm going to drop a, um, a gospel album. And this is the result that he came up with. Um, 11 songs originally added to on. Only one, a very old song, an 80 degrees unreleased song. He got features on here like The Clip. Cause no malice went to gospel rap too so he at least end up he was able to bring the clips back since he dropped the gospel album and he got Ty Dollar Signs and Lambrand this album isn't that bad though it, it sounds pretty good um, you know I think a lot of people feel as if Kanye went through too many changes. Um, but I, I think Kanye got a good, pretty good discography. Me personally, Snoop Dogg has the best discography like, ever. Snoop Dogg has the best discography. E-40s is very solid, but it's underground. Um, Kanye West got a pretty good discography, man. So yeah, that's a brief intro. Uh, yeah, that's a. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. That's a brief intro on on, on Kanye. Uh, I'm hoping you guys enjoy the content. Let me know what you think about the brief intro. Anyway, peace.